Welcome to the MoVC Control Cabinet Products Basic to Intermediate Training. This is session 12 and lab number 5. We're definitely moving ahead, so be encouraged. Today is a nice, easy lab. We're going to do something that won't take you that long, but it's very interesting and instructive. It is servo motor startup in ELSM mode. You may remember we introduced ELSM mode back in the beginning. It stands for encoderless synchronous machine, or as I think of it, encoderless servo motor. It's an open loop control mode that SEW Eurodrive introduced with MoVC. It lets you control a servo motor that does not have any kind of feedback device like an encoder or resolver. That means it's kind of like VFC open loop mode with asynchronous motors. In the past, we really couldn't control servo motors without encoders or resolvers. So this is really a bit of a game changer for us. It allows you to use a servo motor in applications where you're not doing precision things like positioning, but at the same time, you still want to have the advantages of the servo. Maybe the high dynamic behavior, maybe the torque capabilities, the inertia qualities. I can't begin to list the things you might do with this mode, but there are many situations where a servo can solve certain types of problems. So ELSM mode is just another tool in your toolbox. Now, of course, to do this, you're going to have to have an appropriate servo motor to do this lab. So let's talk about that quickly in the pre-lab instructions. This is one of the few labs that cannot be done with either kind of motor, asynchronous or servo motor. You must have a servo motor. And you need a servo motor that does not have an encoder or resolver so we can operate it in the LSM mode. Now, there aren't necessarily a lot of those floating around. SCW now does offer an encoderless version of some of its servo motors, but chances are you may not have one. So what are you going to do? Well, we're going to simulate one. You can do this actually with any kind of servo motor, including one with an encoder. So how do we do that? Guess what? It's really simple and low tech. You just don't connect the encoder cable. You leave it unconnected from the encoder connector. You just hook up the motor control cable and that is it. Now, if you do that, let me warn you, there are a few gotchas to doing this. So the lab instructions do maneuver around them, but I want you to understand them. First of all, if the encoder has what's called an electronic nameplate. Now, what is an electronic nameplate? Well, some encoders include it and it communicates over the encoder cable. It basically is the equivalent of the physical nameplate on the motor, which means the VFD can read the motor's parameters and more or less do an automatic setup. It's not quite as exciting as DDI, which we talked about earlier. It's kind of an earlier generation idea that you can do sort of a plug and play motor. Many servo motors include this with their encoder, but if you don't connect the encoder, of course you can't read it. So it's not going to be able to read the nameplate. Is that a showstopper? Certainly not, but you'll have to type in the nameplate information manually. That's all, but just be aware of that. Secondly, the motor's temperature sensor also communicates over the encoder cable. So that means you can't read the temperature. In a real life application, that would be a bad idea. But since we're just doing a lab, who cares? But what it does mean is when you configure the motor and commission it, don't tell it it has a temperature sensor because the VFD won't be able to find it and that will cause a fault. Okay, so with those two caveats, that's really all you need to know. So get yourself a servo, connect it up to the VFD, don't connect the encoder cable, and follow the instructions and all will be well. And if you don't have a servo motor, in this case, just follow along with the lab walkthrough and enjoy. So pause the video and do the lab. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed ELSM mode. You can see that it is really nice and really simple and definitely expands what you can do with servo motors beyond some of their classic applications. We're going to do the lab walkthrough now, and if you didn't have a servo motor, pay attention. You'll get to see what it's like setting up one without using an encoder. Okay, well, this is going to be a nice, easy, and relatively short lab. We're going to start up our servo motor in ELSM mode. 
Now I've connected up a CMP50S servo motor and it does actually have an AK0H encoder in it, but as instructed I have not connected the encoder cable. This is my existing project and you can see I've got a fault up here that's caused by the fact that suddenly something is different and it's caused an error. That's no problem, we're going to deal with that. First thing I'd like to do is rename the access since we're now working with a servo motor. Async1 seems kind of wrong, so I'm going to right click on the center section here, pick rename, and change this to servo1. I'm also going to save my project under a different name because this is kind of a transition where we're transitioning to labs that really work better with servo motors. So I'm going to pop down the more menu and I'm going to go to Project, and I'm going to do Save Project As, and I'm going to save it in the same place, but I'm just going to change this name to Class 2. That'll just switch over to a second file name. Okay, we're now ready to move ahead and set up our servo in ELSM mode. We're going to click the top part of the axis circle, but of course, as you well know by now, really doesn't matter, but this does get us close to what we want. We're going to have to do a delivery state factory reset first, and we happen to be in the right place for that. Remember, it's in basic settings, and then reset device parameters submenu. We just pick delivery state. We say, yes, we really do want to restore the delivery state. And off it goes, it's clearing the VFD of all the settings from the previous activities, and that's done. Now we're going to set up our drivetrain. So I'll click drivetrain one. Now normally this particular servo motor does have an electronic nameplate that it can read, but of course since I haven't connected the encoder cable, it doesn't know there's an encoder there, it doesn't know there's an electronic nameplate, it has no idea what's in here. What I need to do is just key in enough of the drive nomenclature to commission the drive. I'm going to key in just the motor name and I'm going to key in the brake and that is it. I am not going to key in the temperature sensor information or the encoder. Neither one is accessible with that cable disconnected. If I say that either one's there, it's going to just start throwing up continuous faults. So I'm going to go in here clear the existing motor and type in the nomenclature, which is CMP50S slash BK. So that's the servo nomenclature and the brake. I got that from the physical nameplate on the motor. I'll click apply drivetrain. And that's that. Now you can see it's gone to the control system here and notice that ELSM is picked and it's also grayed out. There's nothing to pop down. That's because I can't use CFC mode with an encoderless motor, and that's the only other mode that applies to servos. Moby Suite's intelligent enough to know that ELSM mode is my only possibility. That's okay. I'm going to go here to where it says pulse width modulation frequency and change it to 16, just so I don't have to hear the pulse width modulation. I'm going to go and key in my line voltage, which is 460. And that should take care of basically everything we need as far as the control system is concerned. I'm going to go back and click the motor square just to make sure everything's good here. And I'm glad I did because actually it isn't. It's made a number of assumptions that aren't correct. First of all, I need to be sure that I have the right motor speed class. Servos come in different speed classes with system voltages. This information is on the nameplate. My motor is actually a 4,500 RPM speed class. 400 volts is fine. That is not the line voltage, that is the motor voltage, so I'm going to leave that alone. I have a non-ventilated motor. This is the correct torque. I do need to come in here and say that there is no temperature monitoring because it's made some assumptions which created a fault. So I'll just remove that. The brake is fine, it is connected to the DB00 connector, and that is now everything I need for Movi Suite to commission the motor. So I'm going to click continue with two. It goes back to the control system screen. I'm now going to click continue and transfer drivetrain to device. Of course, it warns me the motor could run, so I have double checked my controller inhibit switch is turned off. So I'll go ahead and do the startup.
All right, well, that is complete. I've completed startup successfully. All right, now I have a fault up here. I need to deal with that. I'm going to just clear it. This came about when I factory defaulted my drive. It is very common to find faults after you do a factory reset and commissioning, so clear those. And occasionally, Movi Suite may even say that the project is out of sync with the VFD. If it is, of course, just go in there and synchronize it correctly and take care of that. But we've now cleared up our fault and we didn't have to synchronize. Our next step is to set some limits. So we'll go to the monitoring functions menu and pick limit values. And we need to set our motor's maximum and minimum speeds. And also we need to set our application limit ramp values. Now, 36,000 RPM is very fast and definitely well beyond what our servo motor can do. So I'm going to change this to its nominal speed, which is 4,500 RPM, and I need to change it for both directions. Okay, of course, with your motor, you would need to pick whatever its nominal speed is. And I'm going to pick a ramp for my application limits that gives me a ramp time of about a quarter of a second. To do that, it needs to be essentially four times the motor's nominal speed. That's 18,000 RPM per second. I know that seems incredibly fast, but actually it isn't. So there we go. We have now set our limits. And that is pretty much all we have to do. So we can go back to our access circle now. And if we wish, we can test out our drive. To test out our drive, we go into manual mode, just like we did with our asynchronous motor. So I pick the tools menu in manual mode. And of course I need to activate it. And it reminds me I have controller inhibit in the wrong state, so I need to turn that switch on. I've just removed controller inhibit. We're now ready to go. Notice we are very clearly in manual mode. The little hand is appearing next to the FCV number and the FCV number is 04, which is manual mode. And we do exactly what we did with the asynchronous motor. We click the play button and we simply adjust the speed slider. And we can see our motor is spinning. Let's try the other direction. Looks okay. Let's do a back and forth. Let's do a stop. We'll key in a specific value. Let's do 2000 RPM. Click play. That works okay. And stop. Now, since we're in ELSM mode, we can't do any of the more sophisticated servo modes like positioning. That is not available. You notice if we go up here, there isn't anything but speed controlled manual mode. This is almost like running an asynchronous motor in VFC plus mode open loop without an encoder. You'll get similar kinds of performance and you can use it for similar applications. All right, well, that's about all there is to ELSM mode. It's not super exciting other than it allows you to use a servo in countless applications you couldn't before because you were obliged to have that encoder, which raised the cost and the complexity. Now you can almost use a servo motor like you would an open loop asynchronous motor, but you will gain some of the advantages of a servo. All right, enough said about that. Let's remove controller inhibit and deactivate manual mode because we must never forget to deactivate it. And yes, it's fine to deactivate. It is safe and I will close it up. And that is it. So that's all. And that is the end of session 12. Nice, easy session. Hope you found it fun.